happy honkings. I'm your host, Wolfie Killer, and you're watching Wolfie's Snapshot Review. In this week's edition of Wolfie's Snapshot Review, we'll be going over the new 20W14A snapshot and briefly touch over the incredible April Fool's thing Mojang shat onto the table this week. I'm no stranger to rubbing my face all over brown piles, so they should be quite fun. After that, we'll go over some community opinions and answers to last week's question. Let's get into it, shall we? 20W14A came out this week on April 2nd, 2020, one day after April Fool's Day. This relatively small snapshot added a new zombified version of Hoglins, known as a Zoglin. Very creative naming Mojang, modifies the behavior of the recently added Strider and changes some things. Starting from the top, Zoglins are 20W14A's biggest feature and resemble the zombified pigmen of old somewhat. These vicious beasts are unique in the fact that they attack every single mob except for Zoglins and Creepers. I assume at one point they actually attacked Creepers, but stopped after realizing that was a comically horrible idea. Although I must admit, uh, Zoglin charging headfirst at a Creeper only to blow up on contact was one hell of a fun mental image. These angry little shits are created when a Hoglin crosses over into the overworld via a nether portal. As expected, a Zoglin spawn egg was also added to the game. Next up, changes. Compasses received some changes regarding the new lodestone block that was added last week. They have a few new data fields regarding their interactions with lodestones, which are probably going to be handy if you like command blocks. However, that's not all. Compasses can now be enchanted with Curse of Vanishing, an enchantment that causes them to disappear upon death instead of just being dropped. I can imagine some utility there for some niche games. Maybe. Probably not, actually. Warped Fungus on a stick has now been made more durable, so you can poke striders for longer with it. Hooray! Strider speed over lava has also been increased significantly to the point where a strider over lava is now actually faster than a boat. Should survival become a thing again, I'd be very interested in seeing some kind of strider transport developed. A small change has been made to attributes, causing items and entities to no longer keep unknown attributes, whatever that means. Also, some attribute names were changed, including some of the ones that control horses, movement speed, and the like. If you're a certain moderator, you may want to do some investigating to make sure those horses of yours don't break more than, uh, well, MRT running 1.15. None of the other changes really do much, save for one. World saving and loading has been modified. Region files are now opened in synchronous mode to prevent data loss and corruption after crashes. I can imagine server owners everywhere rejoicing or shitting themselves, depending on what this actually does. And servers such as ours have the option to disable this, should we show choose to. You know, like in the case that this turns out to be absolute trash, like 1.15's TPS. If the change is wrapped up and covered, we're on to Vulpe's favorite part. Bug fixes. 20W14A contained 35 bug fixes, about half of which cover pre-1.16 versions. Five of these may affect the MRT or users on the MRT. First off, MC113049 was fixed, which caused compasses and item frames to bug out when on the floor or the ceiling. They should now point to the correct location. MC161128 was hit with bug spray. This bug caused piston heads to occasionally be left behind when the base is quickly broken and replaced. This may or may not affect World Edit's ability to accidentally bug pistons so they make some nice fucking tables. So keep that in mind. MC164446 was removed from the current plane of existence. This bug caused all data packs to unload if a tag's value was invalid. Next, MC167608 was fixed as well. This bug is merely listed as destroying items after respawning is weird, which is not very descriptive actual competent speak, this caused destroying an item frame after respawning to create a spooky ghost entity that was invisible. Very spooky, yes. This seems to have been client end as quitting and rejoining fixes it. So, yeah. Lastly, MC169975 went quietly into the night. This bug affected spectator mode and caused highlight spectator's key to not affect any other players aside from the person hitting said key. This key will now cause everyone on the MRT to glow like the glorious bastards they are when triggered. That's all for 20W14A. We'll be back on after a short commercial break with some news on the April Fool snapshot and community opinions. If you stop watching here, I'll hold it against you personally for the rest of my days. Fox, out.
penso che un sogno così non ritorni mai più Mi dipingevo le mani e la faccia di blu Good day. I'm Kitty Catwoman 231 in the MBS newsroom. Here's what's happening. Cookie 46910 is the winner of Survivor Vakiyawa. Cookie received four votes from the jury of previously eliminated contestants, while Conrick 005 received three votes and Vicky Posa zero, despite being production assistant in Minecraft Yoshi 26's pick to win the season. You can watch MBS coverage of the Survivor reunion on our channel for all the discussion on the results of the season. Also at the Survivor reunion, Minecraft Yoshi 26 announced his next game show will either be a 10th season of The Mole, which last was held two years ago in 2018, or a new show called The Genius, featuring logic games and puzzles. Yoshi still has not decided which of the two will be taking place next. The coronavirus pandemic continues with over a million infected worldwide. The United States, a country from which many MRT members originate, is the world leader in infections with over 3,000 confirmed cases. And the MRT is seeing a noticeable increase in activity on weekdays as a result of the pandemic. The Epsilon Republic is holding a presidential election. MBS News is holding a debate with the presidential candidates, which you can watch live next Saturday at 7 p.m. GMT. And the April 2020 GSM is next Sunday at 7 p.m. GMT. The preliminary agenda should be released in the coming days, and MBS will, as usual, be broadcasting the meeting live. That's the latest from MBS News. Follow us for more news at twitter.com slash news underscore MBS. From MBS News in Central City, I'm Kitty Cat, Woman 231. Now back to Volpe's Snapshot Review. Welcome back, folks. To those of you who are still listening in, congratulations. You are morally superior to your non-listening cohorts. On April 1st, 2020, Mojang unloaded a warm pile named 20W14 Infinite onto the collective headspace of the entire species. This update, in all seriousness, really hits me in a spot I like. It reminds me of Mist in a way, with all the dimensions and stuff. The core idea of the snapshot is infinite content and infinite dimensions. This snapshot allows players to modify nether portals with special books to generate portals to certain dimensions of which there are approximately 2 billion. Crazy, right? Many of these dimensions are absolutely insane, featuring all kinds of neato things. My favorite is the sponge dimension, which is just one giant 3D fractal. A more thorough explanation can be found on the Minecraft wiki, as I'm not going to go into it here. Also, I will add I love this sort of concept. A sandbox game involving infinite dimensions with a variety of surrealistic terrain types would be an incredibly fun thing. If there's any coders on this server or anybody listening that does know how to do this, uh, I would love it if you made it like a little game that does this, but that's just me. 
there is this thing that this update does that should be kept in mind though, and that's the addition of a block named uh, the swaggiest stairs in the world. Realistically, these are basically stairs made of netherite blocks. This isn't actually a real block in the snapshot so far, so it being teased here could indicate its future addition to the game. We saw a similar thing like this with coloured glass and coloured glass panes, which first made their appearance in the joke update Minecraft 2.0 before later being added in the game for real. That's all I've got to say about this thing. I'll move on to the community opinions and then wrap this week's episode up. The more astute or non-goldfish minded of you might recall last week's question thrown in at the end of the lengthy 1.16 recap. The question is as follows. Of the 1.16 features added so far, which are you most excited for and why? I got a disappointingly low amount of answers for that. For shame, MRT. For shame. First up, we've got Frumple's response, meaning it's the only opinion that matters here. <laughs> All he had to say when asked was, they have to fix the goddamn performance. Not quite an answer to the question, but that is indeed an answer and I think all of us can indeed agree with it. I do agree that 1.16's performance is still a bit lackluster, but I don't think it's notably worse, if at all, than 1.15, although, to be fully honest, that isn't really saying much. Some of the fixes in 1.16 do have the potential to improve the performance of the server, which is currently quite dismal. Next up, Imperial Blocks response. Hello, he says. Best 1.16 feature added so far is the lodestone block of 20W13A. It's like a slash home for compasses, which brings the compass to point to a much more desirable location than just the world spawn point. One lodestone can be set in a main base, one at the iron farm, one at the slime farm, and so on like you were running slash home, he wrote. Yes, that's definitely a feature of lodestone, but it doesn't really do much for a creative server. Should we have a survival world without slash home, which I will add would be a very interesting thing to play on, I can see lodestones as being very useful on that survival world. I underscore 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 7D responded in a less lengthy manner. The target block, he said, was his favourite thing, saying that it will be useful in games. I absolutely agree, I underscore 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 7D. That block is indeed quite neato, and I can absolutely see the potential in various games, especially with its redstone pulse abilities. Minecraft Yogi 26 when asked repeatedly for an answer, responded with a more general, I like all the new blocks, and the new lights. I feel you, man. The sheer amount of new colours added with the new blocks will greatly diversify the building palette of any builder on the MRT, experimental or crazy enough to give them a whirl. I personally love the Soul Fire Lantern as it's cool as all hell. That is all the responses we got. Thank you to everyone who sent something in. I've got another question for everybody. Aside from the obvious, more optimization, you Swedish skull fucks, what do you hope is added, changed, or fixed to 1.16 that hasn't been done already? Please uh, DM me your answers via Discord. I can be reached at eris hashtag 0075 and would love to hear from you. That's all for episode 2. I thank you all for joining me yet again and hope you join me for a future episode and snapshot. Ciao and happy honkings. Fox out. Thank you.